In this part, we will discover what AC2 is. First, it stands for Elastic Cloud Computing. It is the most popular service of AWS, and it will provide us with the ability to run virtual machines, store data on virtual disks, distribute loads between several machines, and scale services using auto scanning groups. Understanding SC2 is fundamental if you want to understand how the cloud works. In my opinion, it is the heart of AWS, both for managing your machines and all the associated services. Let's embark on an exercise. We'll start our first Linux machine. To do so, we will launch our virtual server and choose its type and the system to install. Today, we'll see the different parameters relating to our instance, as well as how to launch and stop our machine and terminate it. So here we are on the console. We are going to look for the AC2 service. As you can see, here you have the AC2 service. As explained before, when launching an instance, you have to be extremely careful about your location. In my case, I'm in Paris, so I'll be launching my instance from Paris. As you can see, in Paris, I have no instance running, no dedicated votes, no storage, no key pairs, no placement groups, no elastic IP, no snapshots, no load balancer, and finally one in unique security group that is set by default. To launch it, you need to click on the tab launch an instance. For the purpose of this course, we will use the Amazon Linux 2 Amy image as it carries with it many Amazon specific services that we will need during this course. In addition, this image is eligible to the free offer. We can apply the free offer filter to ensure that only free offers appear. And as you can see, we can find the Amy that we've selected. Once you have selected the type of system to install on your server, you can select the type of instance. There is a very large list of all the type of instance that can be launched. The main differences are about the resources available, that is to say the vCPU and the memory. Here with the T2 Micro, we have one vCPU and one gigabyte of memory, which is more than enough in our case. Once the type of instance selected, it could be launched. However, it is preferable to see different parameters that can be applied to have a more global vision. We are now at step three, where the details can be configured. We could launch, for example, through machines, but in our case, it is preferable to only launch one. Regarding the purchasing option, it is possible to make spot instances. But here, it's not necessary. Here, we'll use an on-demand version, meaning that we'll create a machine depending on the demand. At the network level, the VPC, the Virtual Private Cloud, 
the function network on which your instance will be located. This lambda defines the ability zones on which your machine will be located. It is preferable to select the default option. Concerning the automatic allocation of the IP address, you should know that if you leave the settings by default, the status setting will be defined as activated and therefore we'll have an IP address that will be allocated to us automatically. However, you could change this setting. For the time being, we do not need either placement group or raw IM, and we will study later the capacity reservation and the stop behavior. All these parameters are correctly defined, there is no need to change them. In terms of advanced details, it will be interesting to see later on how the user data is used. For the moment, the parameters are well set. We then move on to the next step, the ones where we add storage. Our operating system, our MI, must be installed on a hard drive. And it is at this stage that we will define the size of the storage. It's not necessary to modify the size since Linux systems do not need more than 8GB. The default capacity will be more than enough for the purpose of our tutorial. It is possible to encrypt the hard drive, but it's better to keep it simple. We then click on Next. This is where you can add tags that are used to identify our machines. For example, we can put next to the name tag, the name of our first instance. We continue with the configuration of the security group. We'll define which ports are open to our machine. It acts as the firewall of our machine in LWS. Since we are creating a Linux machine, we'll be connecting through SSH. So we'll create our first security group. which once again, I will name my first instance. In the description, you can, for example, write my first Linux server. You then have the type of SSH, of TCP protocol, the range of the ports 22, as well as the ability to create a private IP address, something custom, anything that you desire. Here, the address quadruple zero slash zero means that we can connect from anywhere in the world to this Linux machine. that we are about to create. Once this is confirmed, we'll check and launch our machine. We are on Amy Linux 2. We are on T2 Micro with one vCPU and one go of memory. The SSH port is also open. All the information that is on your screen is correct. So you can now launch the instance. On Amazon Web Services, the Linux machines are secured and you can only connect to them by SSH using a key and not a password. You can either choose a key pair or create a new one. Today we'll create a new one. Choose the name you like, 
I'll call mine my first instance. You have to download it, but only once. Once saved, a file in PME format appears, which is the standard format for SSH keys. We then launch our instance. You'll see a message indicating that it is starting. Let's now display the running instances. You can see here my first instance in T2 Micro, which is running. When the indicator is green, it means that the machine is operating. If you haven't selected a free machine, well, this will generate fees. Regarding the behavior of the machines, how do we turn it on and how do we turn it off? We can apply several actions. We select the action tab. In the instance statue subsection, we can either stop it, restart it, or terminate it. If we shut down the machine or restart it, it will keep all the settings that have been applied and the stored data. However, the termination will result in a termination of the storage and the instance. Today, we have created our first instance. We'll see later on how an IP address or other parameters can be modified.